Hello, I'm Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com and yes, I've gone and lost me bloody championship title on the grandest stage of them all, but quite frankly, I couldn't care. I'm going to reiterate my message from the start of night one's WTF Moments video. WWE, thank you for a bloody enjoyable night of professional wrestling. Yes, you could argue that night two dragged on and went a little bit slower in comparison to night one, but all I'm going to say is Firefly Fun House Match. Don't need to say anything else. Hit the intro. A WTF! A WTF! But to the start of the kickoff show we go, and we were told when the kickoff show came straight on the air that Gronk was coming back for a second night, and the night was ruined before it even began. I cannot have been the only person watching night one hoping that Vince McMahon was sat in his chair watching Gronk doing whatever Gronk was doing, thinking to himself, What the hell is that, Gronk? You're fired! It's a shame he didn't. Somebody find out where Peter Rosenberg keeps his crystal ball because he's been looking forward to that match there since the Royal Rumble. Yes, of course, Edge pulled a fast one over that no good snack Randy Orton in the Royal Rumble match, but nobody could have seen what happened after the Royal Rumble resulting in that match happening there. I don't care what you say, Pete. One cultaholic sign at WrestleMania 36. Get in there. We've got to take what we can get under the circumstances, don't we? But on a more serious note, a big thank you goes out to Cody and Colton Kaiser and Manal Patel for showing me what they would have done if WrestleMania 36 had taken place as it originally would have before this all kicked off. If you ever get to go to a wrestling show ever again, do what they did. Are there any adverts John Cena does not do these days? Two days in a row this weekend, we've seen John Cena riding a purple cow, and then last night, on night two of WrestleMania 36, he's eating crisps. As if John Cena actually eats crisps. I eat a lot of crisps, and I don't look like John Cena, do I? <laughs> But Takis, you have a crisp called Fuego and you have a wrestling person involved in your advertisement for this crisp called Fuego and you don't ask Mauro Ranallo what the hell's wrong with you, man? Hang on a second there, there's actual liquid in Big Terry Ford's cup. He brought that cup away from his face and he made the noise, a noise that can only be made when you've got a lot of drink inside your mouth. Big Terry Ford cannot have that much saliva in his mouth, I'm not buying it. But I'm making this a WTF moment because I always thought Big Terry Ford had nothing in that cup, but he did at WrestleMania. Why? But it turns out that Peter Rosenberg is an actual angel, which is, of course, a huge WTF moment because he asked the question, is there anybody more charismatic in the entire WWE than the Street Profits? You thought he was going to say Montez Ford and Montez Ford alone right there as well, didn't you? I did, and he fooled me. God bless you, Peter. Oscar! Neighbours, neighbours, neighbours. But the question has to be asked, why did Natalia, one former WWE Women's Tag Team Champion, ask her right there and then? And after seeing that opening promo for WrestleMania 36 all the way through for the second time, I still can't make sense of it. I understand algebra more than I do the thing WWE had opened both nights of WrestleMania 36, and I don't even know what algebra is. Now, I'm not being funny, right? And I know Charlotte Flair targeted the knee of Rhea Ripley for the entirety of their NXT Women's Championship match, but that can't have been the part of Rhea Ripley's body that was hurting the most come the end of that matchup. I feel like we all need to have right now a moment's silence for Rhea Ripley's voice box because slap my ass and call me Betty did she scream a hell of a lot or what throughout the entirety of that match good god almighty I thought I was watching Daphne matches from the WCW days oh geez we'll know what the hell that means but during that match Tom Phillips did what Tom Phillips does best and that's face fornicate the poo 
out of a line on WWE commentary when he claimed that that match, Rhea Ripley being in that match of course, was the first time NXT had been represented on the grandest stage of them all, point at the lovely sign on a WrestleMania card. And in that moment it was clear for all to see that Tommy Phillips forgot the fact that both Ricochet and Alistair Black, this time last year when they made their WrestleMania debuts, they were still officially, I think, NXT superstars and if you want to put a put something a bit more solidified on top of that thing. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Killian Dane, the kickoff show for 33. He was a proper NXT superstar there, and I don't care what you say. So it wasn't the first time, Tom, all right? You stupid knee. Yeah, Rhea, you tell that stupid knee. I don't know about you, but it made me laugh. Dun, 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 dun. Now I might be going rain the bloody twist right now, but one second we're seeing Charlotte Flair laying the boots into Rhea Ripley, who was laid down on the mat like a rabbit who had just been hit by a car. Aww. But then half a second later, if that, we see Rhea Ripley not only back up on her feet, but kicking Charlotte Flair right in the midst of Charlotte Flair's pristine teeth. What lovely teeth she has. They're bloody glorious, aren't they? And I was left asking one question. How the hell does Rhea Ripley move that quickly? She's not the Undertaker, for goodness sake. Like we saw at night one of WrestleMania 36, Rhea Ripley's not supernatural, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Kevin Dunn. Imagine saying that at the start of the year. But then I guess imagine predicting anything that's going on in the world right now at the start of the year. What a bloody weird year we're having, eh? Wow. Ooh. Yep, I wrong, wrong, wrong. Yep, I wrong, wrong. And then we have a direct quote from Byron Saxton when he said, Black has got to pick his spot with Lashley. You can't rush anything with Bobby Lashley. Unless, of course, it's getting engaged and married. He loves jumping into bed at double quick speed, does old Bob. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Now, I'm not being funny, right? And I know in real life, it's as real as real can be. Bobby Lashley and Lana are married. They're a married couple. I bet Lana makes Bobby really, really happy. And Lana just puts up with Bobby. But just imagine you're Bobby Lashley. You've won so many championships around the world doing the wrestling over the past 15 years. You're not going to listen to Lana telling you how to do the wrestling, are you? Why would you even consider that when you're Bobby Lashley? who was good at the wrestling, and Lana, who's a wrestler. That would be like Carol Baskin asking Joe Exotic how to keep tigers inside of a cage, am I right? I don't know. Ah, oh, sh**. Here we go again. It's John O'Clock again, you bastards! He came back for a second, helping two nights in a row, and oh my god, already he's at the double! It's John O'Clock again! Two in a row. But of course that utter twat would call actual video evidence that showed Sonia texting M M Mandy fake news. Of course a twat like that would use the term fake news to describe actual video evidence. <laughs> You've got to love Dolph Ziggler doing his own pyro sound effects, don't you? Oh, how can he? What a lovely moment. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so beautiful! Oh, the one who kissed! Oh my god! It's the most beautiful WrestleMania moment of all time. But forget about social distancing for a second there, because if they were practicing the actual rules of social distancing, we would never have gotten the most beautiful WrestleMania moment of all time. And let's be honest here, what's more important in life? Actual rules that'll keep you healthy or WrestleMania moments? It's WrestleMania moments, isn't it? But Sonya Deville, Dolph Ziggler, Vince McMahon, who apparently believes us fat lads can't get the pretty girl in life ever. Your fella, Mr. Ziggler, took one hell of a beating as Otis, that beacon of hope for all of the fat lads around the world ever, got the job done on the grandest stage of them all and got his Mandy back. I am emotional wreck. 
What a moment. And then we have Byron Saxton saying right to Tom Phillips' face, Tom Phillips, there's nothing like a good old fashioned love story, is there? And if you know that's a WTF moment, good for you. Go on, Byron's son. And we see a mysterious sign on that door there that isn't mysterious whatsoever because I've written down what it says right here. It says the gym is closed for everyone per WWE medical director. But I guess also per that same medical director, the wrestling, all of the touching, all of the swapping of bodily fluids, all of the kissing with Otis and M Mandy, that's completely fine. Nope, 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 no, 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 nope. If you don't know why, that's a massive nope. I'm not gonna be the one to tell you. Oh God. Well, Edge is the rated R superstar, so of course there's nothing quite like a flying crotch to knock your opponent to the floor, is there? In the words of Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear, ambitious, but rubbish from Edge there. Can somebody just take Vince McMahon to Amsterdam and get this penchant, this fetish for red lights out of his head? You think we've just escaped them with everything involving the fiend and whatnot, and then they come back in and ruin didn't ruin, did they? They were just there for a little portion of that Edge versus Randy Orton match. Get it out of Vince's system. They don't work. And look at all of those WWE titles there. And I'm guessing, with Brock Lesnar being in the building, while that match between Edge and Randy Orton was happening, I'm asking the question, why do they need so many WWE titles in one place at one time? Does Brock lose so many on one particular day? Does he spill his tea down the championship title? I've got no idea. It's a bit weird though isn't it? Now I'm sure in one of his interviews over recent times I've heard Edge say that since he's coming back to do the wrestling in WWE his style is going to change. He's not going to take the big risks he was taking much earlier in his career. So one question Adam what are you doing that for, you mad bastard? And how interesting's that? We have pay-per-view cables in WWE. They're not just your ordinary cables, they're pay-per-view cables, which I'm guessing means they're longer and cost you more money. Gimmick infringement from Gronk as he does quite literally Kofi Kingston's trustful thing on top of a crowd to become 24-7 champion. That thing is just an utter bell end from start to finish, isn't he? You don't do gimmick infringement when you're new in the business. We all know this man. Somebody tell Gronk. Or maybe somebody don't tell Gronk and one of the old timers will smack him in the face because he deserves it. But then we have Tom Phillips back once again face fornicating the poo out of a line on commentary when he claims that Mojo became 24-7 champion earlier tonight. Which I guess for Tom as he was sitting in his chair at ringside saying that line, it probably would have been true. But in the realms of this WrestleMania and it's too big for one nightness, it wasn't true, was it? He won it last night, Tom. Get it all right in your head, son. And there go the pants at WrestleMania. And I don't know why, really, but I felt compelled to include that direct quote from Tom at WrestleMania. The at WrestleMania bit was weird. He just took his pants off, didn't he? It's the same anywhere, anytime. Not, 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 not. Whoopa! Bianca Belair turned up. That was a shock, wasn't it? Also a WTF moment. Is she on the Monday Night Raw roster now? Is her first feud against Zelina Vega? I guess we'll find out tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. But one thing we do know is that if she is, on Raw, aligned with Dawkins and Big Tez Ford, she needs to change the first line of her theme. Because no longer is Bianca Belair on her own against the world. She's in a trio with Terry and Dawks, isn't she, I? Mago, 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 Mago. Sasha Banks is a multi-time women's champion. I'm sure she would love to have the gold back around her waist said Michael Cole. But I'm asking Michael Cole, how can Sasha Banks have something back around her waist that was never there to begin with? It would appear that Michael Cole is the Riddler. And, uh, di and then we have Michael Cole saying that Bailey's reign, her current reign as SmackDown Women's Champion, stands at 175 days. He even said that Bailey's had two separate reigns as SmackDown Women's Champion. He stopped speaking like Bailey's current reign is standing for over 300 days, and that win for Charlotte Flair at Hell in a Cell 2019 didn't happen. I can't believe we're here. 
Somebody. <laughs> the end is nigh. The end is nigh. Time's run away. The end is nigh. Nigh. But then we have Michael going on about Bailey and how to retain her SmackDown Women's Championship. She would have to defeat four other women. And that's just not true, is it? Michael Cole, man, it's an elimination match. It does not matter a jolt in the slightest who gets rid of the first three people out of that match. All Bailey must do is make sure she is the lady who gets the last fall. All Bailey must do to retain her title is make sure she's the woman to get the last fall. What are you on about, man? Finally, I mean, it took nearly one and three quarter WrestleManias, by God, but finally, a wrestler wrestling in the wrestling ring at WrestleMania 36 interacted with one of the commentators. I found it so weird that with no crowd and no noise inside the arena, Michael Cole and Pal sat at ringside, screaming at the top of their lungs. Obviously, the wrestlers inside the ring must be able to hear the commentators, but nobody spoke to them. It was weird, especially when the commentators were besmirching their good name. But thank goodness for Bailey, who said, no, they didn't, like Seth Rollins apparently, in response to Michael Cole claiming that both she and Sasha Banks almost got eliminated at the same time. Well done, Pamela. You stupid bellend referee with your stupid massive thick caterpillar eyebrows. You screwed the Tamina train and you robbed Tamina of her WrestleMania moment and her first proper singles title in WWE or any title for that matter the 24-7 reign that doesn't count that championship is a joke but referee with thick eyebrows you robbed Tamina you bastard if I get my hands on you I'll shave your brows off I will it's no DQ when you're saying to Tamina you can't use the ropes load of absolute bollocks you should be fired Oh, that really made me angry. Tamina was robbed. And then we got to the Firefly Funhouse thing. It wasn't a match and whoa! There's a lot to digest here. Question number one. How the hell did John Cena get from the stage to inside the house? Question number two. How the hell did Bray Wyatt get John Cena dressed in his old undercrackers and the rest of the costumes he had John dressed up in for that matter? How? You can look, but you can't touch. Oh, Bray, you saucy bastard. Seeing that right in the face of John Cena after everything that happened between him and Nikki Bella, you have balls, son. Lovely balls. And then we have a direct quote from 1980s Bray Wyatt when he says, my tag team partner is such a physical specimen, you can't help but worship him. Why? Here's why. Because that's what being a stud is all about, having muscles, no matter what little talent you possess. And that, my friend, is what my tag partner, Johnny Large Meat, is all about. So not only did Bray Wyatt call John Cena Johnny Large Meat, but he also claimed John Cena has no talent, but a lot of muscles. The balls on Bray. And then we had Johnny Large Meat pumping iron so hard he lost the power in his arms. You know when Jay from the Inbetweeners numbs his arms so it feels like somebody else is doing it? Well, Johnny Large Meat, both arms for him. The fans will be excited they just went from six to midnight, Johnny Large Meat said in a rap. But then that line there was followed by canned laughter from children. Six to midnight, getting excited. That was a joke about the sex, wasn't it? Children's laughter shouldn't be coming after that, should it? Oh, and then something started to happen that we never, ever, ever thought we'd see with our own eyes. But something, me personally, I've been hoping for for a very long time. It all started when big old Johnny Largemeet said, because unlike Husky Harris, that's a weight that I can manage. And when I heard that, I was thinking, you're not normal Johnny boy, large bow Jonathan, large match Cena, are you, John? Hustle, loyalty, and respect, pa. Respect, pa. Rise above hate. You're not doing that there, are you? You bully. But then the heel John Cena doubled down and said, you're a slut for opportunity because you're blowing every chance. Oral sex joke. He's in a children's funhouse thing. Oh, my goodness. But also, John Cena calling Bray Wyatt a slut. A slut at WrestleMania. How did that get past Vince McMahon? What is going on? And then if Bray Wyatt being Eric Bischoff wasn't enough for you, bloody hell, it finally happened. Get, hoo, 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 hoo. 
John Cena walked out as Hollywood Johnny Large Meat. My God, the heel turn finally happened. The end is nigh, the end is nigh. Time for the way, the end is nigh, nigh. This is such good shit. That puppet Vince McMahon, or was it real Vince McMahon, or was it puppet Vince McMahon? I don't know, this match was too much to compute, too much to take in, too much was happening. I'm still not quite sure what the hell this thing was that we saw last night. Am I alive? Is this camera real? What, what is? Good. And then we get the voiceover that was heard while that shot there was on screen as we heard Cena from a recent Smackdown saying this WrestleMania match is going to accomplish what should have happened six years ago. Ending the existence of the most overhyped, overvalued, overprivileged WWE superstar in existence. I think I said overprivileged. Wrong there. So I've just corrected myself because I can't be asked to read it all again. But the wonderful thing about that soundbite is the fact it was played just before Bray Wyatt, or The Fiend at least, murdered John Cena. Poof! We heard that soundbite and he was gone. And who would have thought heading into this WrestleMania 36 weekend, we would have seen the untimely murders of both AJ Styles and John Cena? They're both gone. E goodness. And we're all Titus O'Neil right there, aren't we? Aren't we? What? But I think it's quite simple what happened to John Cena here. I do believe firmly, with all my heart, that John Cena was invited round to the Firefly Funhouse for a cup of tea. But what John Cena didn't realise is that the fiend Bray Wyatt, or normalish Bray Wyatt, who knows, who gives a toss? He slipped some LSD and or pencil shavings into that cup of tea, Cena necked it back, he was tripping bowels, and we saw what Cena saw. Because I'm not sure what other explanation you can have for that thing. I was about to say match there. It's not a match, it's a thing. Let me know your explanation for what we saw inside the Firefly Funhouse because I want to know every single possibility for that thing. I can. It was amazing though. The best thing. But I've got to mention it, I guess, just go and look at John Cena's Instagram account immediately after that match against Bray Wyatt had finished. It's way, way, it's too much, isn't it? Too much to compute. Paul Heyman not taking the mic off the ring announcer so he could do <laughs> big ring announcement thing. Is Paul okay? And then we end with Drew McIntyre winning the WWE Championship. And I know you at home will want me to talk about how that match between Drew and Brock was basically exactly the same as the Universal Championship match between Braun and Bill. But to be honest with you, I couldn't give a toss because Drew McIntyre is the WWE Champion. Drew McIntyre is the first British WWE World Champion. And I'm proud as punch I am. What a lovely... End to WrestleMania weekend, WWE, me hats off to you for pulling a rabbit out your arsehole against all of the odds. They did well, didn't they? They did well. The positives far outweigh the negatives. And I think that's just a great thing because expectations could not have been lower heading in to this WrestleMania weekend, could they? But they produced something that made us forget about the issues in the world at the minute. Viva la wrestling. Go on, Drew McIntyre. I'm away. For a sleep. <laughs>